Hey everyone, if you're watching this, it's Tuesday, which means it's PBE day for TFT Fates. Pretty exciting. Uh, there's a bunch of new content, new champions, new traits, new origins. It's gonna be great. Uh, but that's not what this video is about. This video is about some of the system changes that you'll see on PBE and wanted to kind of run that down and talk about those a little bit, as well as talk about PBE in general. Um, so first off with PBE, just so you know, uh, we're going in, you know, with stuff kind of in flux. Uh, things are going to change pretty much every day on PBE, um, so expect a lot of changes. Give us feedback on how you like these changes after you play them, please, um, and we can respond to that. That's what PBE is for. We have two weeks to respond to this, um, so we'll make changes if we need to, um, but definitely try it out. So, what can you expect to see on PBE? Well, First off, uh, we've made some changes to the XP at level 7, 8, and 9. Um, what this means is to get to level 7, you now need 4 more gold. To get to level 8, you need 4 more gold. And to get to level 9, you need 8 more gold for a total of 16 more gold. The reason for this is that we found it was too easy to get to level 9 pretty consistently, uh, as well as level 8 and level 7. And so slowing that down just a little bit allows us to make the 4 and 5 costs that are harder to get a little bit more powerful and a little more satisfying. Whereas the one, two, and three costs ends up being a little less powerful. Um, and so again, like if you hit level nine, that's because you're doing very well. This should be harder. Combine this with the fact that you're getting less gold because there's no galaxies active. And yeah, this should be a pretty positive change. So don't expect to hit level nine every game. And around, you know, level six, seven, and eight, you're gonna have to make tough decisions about do you roll? Or do you level? So, cool. All right, bag size changes. At level five, we have shifted 5% into one costs. At level six, we've shifted 5% into one costs. And at level seven, we've shifted 5% into two costs. So you might be wondering, because we've seen this before, uh, what happens if, you know, one cost are this obvious, right? Are we back in a hyper roll meta? And the reality is, you're going to see more three stars this set. Uh, between the chosen mechanic and these changes, there will be more three stars. Uh, this is intended, but it's also being balanced around. Uh, so that there's no there's no Zaya this set. There's no three cost, three star, one cost that just like takes over games is our intention. Uh, and again, this is what some of these changes are leaning towards, where it's like, yeah, you can three star one cost, get some power, but you're still gonna want to hit that late game and get that going. Um, should lead to some interesting choices. Um, it allows us to put three star three costs more powerful as well because they're harder to hit until level eight. Um, yeah, so again, let us know how this goes and we'll react to this on PBE. Again, if this fails, we can go back. Um, but right now, we're this is what we're kind of seeing and what we want to do. Now, there's one other change we want to talk about here real quick, uh, which is that consecutive shops will not repeat unbought champions. Um, what this does is so basically anytime the shop refreshes, whether that be a natural refresh or you pressing reroll, any of the sh champs that were there will not appear in the next shop. Um, we will see the impact this has. It definitely does make things a little easier to three star. Um, that's kind of the intention. Uh, but again, if it's too crazy, we can pull this. Uh, but this should be a nice quality of life to prevent those terrible cases where you see like three or four of the exact same champions in the very next reroll. It can feel really bad. Um, but again, this is a test. That's what PB is for. Check it out. Okay, carousel changes. Um, for the first time, we're actually going to talk about what the carousel was and what it's going to become. So here you can see on the left is what the carousel was and the exact odds uh, in galaxies. And most of the time, Opening is defined as one of every item. So most of the time, that's what was happening. But we had all these crazy, I forget what you guys call it, uh, mort dog carousels, um, whether it be offense components, all swords, all force of nature's, tier sword rods, full items, all random full, unique items. This is the Zerat portal kind of opening. Um, so a lot of different stuff here. So we're simplifying it. 65% um, chance of one of everything. And then there's offense, defense, tears, gloves, and that makes up 98% of it. And then we're still keeping the all spat starts and the all force of nature starts for the occasional fun start. We think the opening carousel is where we can still have a little fun with this. 
um, because you haven't really locked in your uh, comp. You're not being punished for anything. It just tells you, hey, for, at the start of the game, you should play a little differently. Uh, one thing to note, defense components. We think we have made adjustments to the items to make uh, cloaks better so that you don't feel like if you start cloak, you're screwed. If we're wrong and you still feel like cloak is terrible, we will cut this. Actually, technically what we'll do is we'll replace the cloaks with gloves and then we'll just cut this one. Um, we don't want to put that, put us in the situation where like three players are just screwed because they had to take cloaks, although it's two because one person can pass on it. But you get the idea. Um, we think we've made progress in this area, but let us know. So again, should be much simpler. Uh, the second carousel, again, you can see what it used to be. Uh, opening was one of each item. Default was random item components. Offense, defense, uh, one of all, um, which was the spatula. Uh, spats and offense, all random full, all sort, lots of crazy things. Even the all Zephyr carousel, lots of crazy things going on here. Uh, we have simplified that greatly. The second carousel is one of the ones you can consider very reliable, and there's only three things that can happen. One of every item plus one bonus component, one of every item plus a spatula, and three spatulas and all random components. This is the one I'm sure you guys will call Mort Dogged, um, but it's only a 5%, and it's very obvious when it happens. It's the only time it can happen. So much simpler to understand, and most of the time always has one of every item. So second carousel, very reliable. Third carousel, same thing. We had a lot of stuff going on. It is simplified, but the third carousel is where we're letting it be a little more unpredictable, just a little. So don't count on the third carousel when you're playing. Um, and this is something we want to keep in mind here is like, we want you to know exactly what's going to happen at each carousel. So the second carousel, very reliable. Third carousel, eh, not as much. 30% uh, one of every item. 50% of the time, it's just going to be random components, any combination. Uh, so this could literally be six armor, two belts, and a tier. We have no control over this. Um, so it's just pure random. 15%, one of all plus a spatula, and that 5% of three spatula and random. So again, but third carousel, you can predict it, a little less predictable. Fourth carousel, though, goes right back to the second carousel. So this is your last chance before you go to full items. Um, this is exactly like the second carousel. So you can plan, okay, if I really need that sword, maybe I want to get to seventh and eighth, and there's a 95% chance it'll be there. Um, technically higher, because I'm sure this has sword pretty often. Um, but very nice and reliable carousel. And again, you compare that to before where you could get some pretty crazy combinations, all random full built, stuff like that. Um, so again, this should be much simpler, much more satisfying. There is still an element of randomness to it. Um, we don't want them being completely predictable, as we've said before, but this should be much better feeling. And then finally, the fifth carousel, it's still full items, just a really minor change here. Um, we went from completed unbuilt is items that no one has built yet, Whereas all random full is just, it can be any item. We leaned more into the completed unbuilt. So most of the time, half the time, in fact, that fifth carousel will be into a bunch of items that no one has completed. And the other big change is there used to be this spatula full. This is one of every spatula item, including force of nature. And doubles full, this is death blade, um, death cap, dragon's claw, all the pairs items and force of nature. We removed those combinations. So it's now actually impossible to get a force of nature off the fifth carousel unless everyone gets a force of nature. I think these two were sort of the most painful in this set, so we removed them. Otherwise, generally what you'll feel is it's all full items like it always has been. So that is the carousel changes. And again, hopefully this should feel a little better and allow you to plan around it and play a little bit more skillfully. So, okay, uh, let's talk some controversial stuff here. So we want to talk about item changes next, but before we do, there are two system changes you need to realize to give context on why we're making these changes. So the first one here is we have a Twisted Fate, and he is auto-attacking a three-star Jarvan, who clearly has a bunch of health, and he hits him for 55 damage. Cool. Uh, with a Giant Slayer, he gets a 1.8x multiplier on that, and he's supposed to do 119 damage, because you have to remember he gets the 15 AD from the item. So after armor calculations and everything, 
It ends up being 119, works exactly as it's supposed to. Sweet. Good times. Here's where we start to have a problem. With two Giant Slayers, you're now dealing 248 damage when we actually only wanted it to be 199. What's going on here, and you'll start to pick this up pretty quickly, is instead of a 2.6 multiplier to 80% added, you get 280% multiplied. And so the damage is multiplicative on an item like Giant Slayer. And so if you've ever seen that triple Giant Slayer Jinx before, you can end up in cases like this. Uh, and you can't see behind my picture, but it says 3.34 versus 5.83. Massive difference between what we expect and what we get. This is one of the reasons why three Giant Slayer is so powerful. But this isn't just Giant Slayer. Oh, and for reference, yeah, this isn't just Giant Slayer. This is anything that says multiply your damage by X percent. So for example, a triple Giant Slayer Jinx with six Rebel is doing 1.8 times 1.8 times 1.8 times 1.6, 9.33x damage. So if you've ever wondered why that just destroys the mech, that's why. Um, another really easy case is the mech. Uh, if you remember in patch 1016, we had uh, Titan's Resolve, which at max stacks was doing 100% more damage, and Hand of Justice, which was doing 50% more damage. Just a real simple case where now that attack would do 2400 when we only intended it to be 2000. Uh, so the TLDR is like every percent was multiplicative. This is Sniper, Rebel, Hand of Justice, things like that. Um, and so we are making a change so that all percent damage amps now stack additively instead of multiplicative with one another. Uh, so this means any, basically there are now three buckets of damage that are multiplicative. There's spell power, there's crit, and there's percent damage amp. These three buckets, each individual bucket is additive, but then from there, it's multiplicative. If you have any questions about this, let me know. Um, but generally, this should prevent certain item combinations from feeling so grossly overpowered compared to other item combinations. Um, this should keep everything much more in balance to what we want to happen. So this should be a very good thing for the game. The second major system change, and ooh, this one's a doozy. Okay, so I've got a one-star Soraka, and she casts heal. Her, she heals for 325. Cool. Uh, she heals her buddy, though, and her buddy has a Grievous Wounds. So Grievous Wounds is 50%, right? So 163. Looks like half. We're good, right? Everything's working? Not so much. Here's the before, here's the after. I don't know if you've ever felt like this playing the game. I know I have many times and it messed with my sanity where it's like, God, that doesn't feel like 50% healing. What's going on? But the green number says it is. It's got to be true, right? Well, no, it's not. It's actually healing 80, 25%, so 82 HP here. Uh, it turns out Grievous Wounds, since the beginning of time, uh, has been bugged to apply twice. Uh, we didn't notice it in set one because Grievous Wounds was 100%, so applying 100% twice didn't matter. Didn't notice it in set two because 75% times 75%, 87.5, you're like, it's basically canceling healing. Uh, and even then in set three, you know, it felt wrong, but like no one really called this out on it. Um, but we figured it out, and sure enough, yeah. So with that, we have fixed the longtime bug where Grievous Wounds was twice as effective as intended. Um, so now it should work exactly as advertised, meaning this buddy will get healed for 163 on Grievous Wounds. Um, and again, this is not going live with Galaxies. This is going live with Fates. I'm just using this for contextual example. So with those two changes in mind, we had to make some item changes. Um, for the item changes, we only replaced two items, and I think you've seen this now because of the article. Uh, Red Buff had this problem where basically it was only usable on Gunslinger, Blaster, Sivir, characters that were designed to hit many different targets. And there weren't a lot of them. So if you got a Red Buff, it was like, well, I guess I'm going Blaster, or I guess I'm going Sivir. It was a very limiting item. Uh, and so again, we're trying to make sure that items don't lock you into a particular comp as much. So we made Sunfire Cape. Very similar effect. It applies burns to things nearby every two seconds. Um, but this is really good to either put on a front line so that they can start burning the nearby tanks, 
or on like an assassin to hop into the back line and start burning the back line. Um, but it should be a much more flexible item. And then disarm, which was basically viable on, well, no one, uh, we have replaced with gargoyle stone plate. I think in the article you guys saw it called iron will. We've since renamed it to gargoyle stone plate. This item's amazing. Uh, this item says the holder grants 20 armor and magic resist for each enemy targeting them. Uh, there is nothing better than taking a frontliner, putting one or two of these, because these are not unique, on a tank, and having them solo tank the frontline and going from like 50 armor, 50 MR to 250 armor, 250 MR. It's very powerful. Um, this item alone makes a bunch of new combinations of like comps possible because you can run a solo frontline, which is pretty cool. Um, so really excited to see how that item plays out. Uh, from there, there are a lot of item adjustments based on what we know. And again, kind of our goals here is one, to make sure that no item um, locks you into a comp. And two, no item is like massively transformative on a single character. Uh, the best example of this is like blue buff Cassiopeia. No item should be doing the whole blue buff Cassiopeia thing where it's like not a champion without it, quite good with it. So first off, uh, needlessly large rod is being nerfed from 20% to 15%. What this allows us to do is not have to worry about, hey, here's a champion with this spell power, but this champion with two rods is now 40% better. That's a significant jump. Um, so we can keep our caster's base a little higher and make items a little less strong. Cool. Uh, Death Cap. Death Cap still gets to be the premier spell power item. Uh, so this is a total of 70 spell power. Um, but now it's not as tied to things like Sorcerer, or in this case, Dusk, where it's like you need more spell power to make the item actually worth. The item is now tuned to be good by itself, period. You should always be happy to get a Death Cap, um, regardless of if you're running Sorcerer or not, or something like that. Um, and I will say with Death Cap, there's a world where this ends up being 80%. Um, we're keeping an eye on it. So uh, Bloodthirster. Bloodthirster gets nerfed. Why? Well, because it turns out healing was bugged, and so with no Grievous Wounds, it is going from 45 to 40, but with Grievous Wounds, it's going from 12 to 20, so it's actually getting buffed. So, should be good for the item. Uh, Dragon's Claw. Uh, if you've played in set 1, this is a throwback when it was 80, excuse me, 83%. Uh, now it's 63%. This is a buff from what it is, still a nerf from back then, but now... Getting cloaks, you should be happy to put this on your tank. They will be very powerful. And I'll say there's a lot of magic damage this set. So I think this item will be in high demand. Uh, Gunblade, same thing as Bloodthirster. I'm not going to do the math again, but you get the idea. And then Deathblade. Uh, Deathblade loses 5 AD per stack. Um, so it's going from 25 a stack to 20. Um, just a small nerf because, again, a single item should not be that multiplicative. And going from like 100 AD to 300 AD is a little insane. Um, so this brings it down in reality a bit. Chalice of Power. Chalice of Power gets a buff in the sense that it was already a complicated item because it had this 20 second limit for no real reason. It's gone. Sweet. Uh, Spear of Shojin. This is a big one. Spear of Shojin is one of the worst defenders and has been for a long time. Where that item alone could take a 150 mana spell user and basically turn them into a 60 mana spell user by attacking six times. Um, and, you know, it kind of made balancing high spell casts very difficult. So we simplified Spear of Shojin. Now Spear of Shojin literally says gain eight mana per auto attack, period. Uh, this means the item is now more flexible. It means you can put it on a 40 mana user and it's okay. You know, it gives them 80% more mana per auto attack. Uh, you can put this on a 100 mana user and it's gonna accelerate them. Um, it's not going to accelerate them as much, but it's still good. Um, it, honestly, in our test, this has been the premier item for, like, I want to cast sooner. So, cool. Uh, Hurricane. Hurricane is another one of the cloak items we think is getting a pretty big buff here. Uh, there's two main changes, and you can only see one of them here. The first change is that the bolts now have infinite range. So if you're a melee person attacking one thing by yourself, the second bolt will now always find another target. Um, so you're always getting the value, which a lot of the times you weren't before. And the bolts can critical strike, which means you can do things like build Infinity Edge Hurricane and not feel bad about it. 
um, you will get the full value. Um, so this opens up a bunch of new build possibilities and a bunch of new champions that will want Hurricane. Putting Hurricane on a Assassin like Talon can actually be very strong because you're critting two people for very high amounts of damage. So, uh, And then Infinity Edge uh, was a little high on our multiplicative and our total damage output. So we've actually removed the 20% critical strike damage from it. Infinity Edge now literally is just you gain 100% critical strike. You put this item on somebody you want to crit all the time. That's it. Uh, last page of items. Static Shiv. This just gets a small damage down. It's minus 5 damage. Uh, we still like the change with the whole true damage and anti-shield. That's been positive. Um, but minus 5 damage. Uh, this item is quite good on duelists. So I'm sure you'll enjoy that. Uh, Luden's same thing. was a little too transformative on people with like 20 mana. Um, so we're balancing around that fact. So some of our 20 mana users will still make good use of this item, uh, but it won't quite be 3x the damage output on them. Ginsu's. Ginsu's has been a fun item since the dawn of time, uh, but for the most part right now, it's actually a pretty bad item. It's kind of a trap to build. There's really no one to build it on. So it gets plus 1% attack speed per stack, which is a lot. Uh, this thing's going to stack up quicker. Should be a fun item. Should be good to go. Uh, and then lastly is Titan's Resolve. Titan's Resolve, we're happy with the change at 25 stacks. Uh, but the payoff doesn't quite feel worth it. Um, and with mech out of the way, we can actually make this item a little bit more fun. Uh, so when you reach max stacks, you now get 50 armor and magic resist instead of 25. Um, so now Titan's Resolve basically says at the start, nothing happens. Each stack gain 2% bonus, up to 50% bonus, which now is also not multiplicative. So that's a nice nerf. And if you get it, here's 50 armor and OR. So... Should be cool. Uh, and then finally, a couple other small changes. Uh, five seconds have been added to the start of every planning round. We do this at the start of every set so that you have time to think. Sweet. It'll get removed in 1020, like it always does. Uh, Trap Claw now has a unique visual effect because there were too many times where you're like, why the hell is my champion stunned? Oh, that's right, Trap Claw. Now you'll know it was because of a Trap Claw. So that'll be nice. Uh, completed items can no longer drop from orbs. We'd already made it really rare to the point where, like, I think I fought twice in all of Galaxies, um, for me personally. It was definitely very rare. It was so rare to the point where, why is it happening? So we just got rid of it. It's done. Uh, adjusted the types of orbs and their contents across all stages of the game. This is a very fancy way of just saying we have slightly shifted how many orbs you can get and when you get them, very slightly. So... You'll probably see one less orb at the start of the game. Um, you'll probably see one to two more orbs across the next few rounds. Things like that. This is a very small adjustment. Overall, I think most players will not notice this change, but just trying to note it. Uh, and then lastly, we fixed this bug, so I'm happy. This was always intended, but when we first implemented it, we got it wrong. Uh, that spatula items will now drop from endgame PvE rounds, but only if you have at least one trait on the board. Uh, so this means, let's say, for example, you're running some duelists, you can drop the duelist spatula, but if you have zero vanguards on the board, you will not drop a vanguard spatula ever. So uh, this should make that still feel fun and still open up some cool options, but only if you're already down that path. So, all right, uh, that is going to do it. Those are the system changes. Um, so enjoy those as well as the new content. And again, I want to stress, this is all subject to change. We are going to be making a lot of changes on PBE because the goal is make the changes a bunch on PBE so that we can ship live in a good state and then not have to make a bunch of major iterative changes on live so that live can end up in a very stable spot. So give us your feedback on these. We're not inflexible. If something's terrible, we'll pull it. If something's awesome, we'll do more of it. You just got to let us know. All right, that's going to do it for me. I can't wait for you guys to be playing PBE probably in the next... I don't know, like two hours, give or take, from when this video goes live. So, all right, until then, enjoy Fates. Take it easy.